beautiful women. Um, I wanted to come on real briefly and share a part of my story because I think it um, might be helpful, especially with um, what's going on right now. And so a part of my story as it pertains to racism is not necessarily the areas in which I've learned or got it right, but the mistakes that I've made. And so for me, racism in my life is on two levels, like the systems that I have benefited from and participated in, as well as have harmed me by way of my children. And then also personally, um, some of the lenses and the biases and the um, racist mindsets that were ingrained in me just as a white person. And so I think if we're gonna ask people to reflect and to be honest, then, um, then we need to be doing it ourselves. And so for me, I have made so many mistakes and I think it's in sharing those mistakes that encourage and empower people. It's not me saying, hey, here are the things I'm doing well. Here are the things I've learned, I've gotten right. It's basically saying that you're going to mess up. You're going to say and do the wrong thing. And just the ability to apologize, to take responsibility, to commit to educating yourself and to learning. My mentor always says, when you know better, you do better. So I would say that my story in regards to racism, a journey of educating myself about the history of this country and what systemic racism looks like, and then also self-reflection of how I've participated in it. I can tell you firsthand that you can have black children, you can love black people, you can have um, black friends, and you can very much still have racist mindsets and be participating in racist systems every single day. Love doesn't cure that, right? Knowledge cures that, a change of behavior cures that. So um, that's just a piece of my story. I have made many mistakes and I will continue to. I have been hurt by racism by way of my children and I've also participated in it um, as a white person. There are times I've gotten it right and there are times where I cringe at, at how badly I've done. I've gotten it so wrong. If you have black friends and they don't talk to you about race, you're, maybe they're your friend, but um, you're probably not theirs. We all have different roles to play right in this like ecosystem of racial justice and we have a responsibility as well. So don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Maybe you're not gonna meet with your local police sergeant, but maybe you're gonna read a book. Maybe you're gonna start a book club. Maybe you're just gonna do some self-reflection and you're gonna process your own bias. Maybe you're gonna have a tough conversation with the family member. Maybe you're gonna go out and vote. Um, hopefully we're gonna do a combination of these things. Most importantly, share, the air, share that I've gotten it wrong many, many times. And that the area, in my opinion, of racial reconciliation is full of landmines. You will step on them. So the goal is not to get it right all the time. The goal, in my opinion, is to know how to get it wrong, to apologize, to take responsibility. And when you know better, you do better. Right now, I'm actually um, parked because I'm on my way to meet with a local police sergeant in a different town than I previously met with to have conversations about what's going on right now, ask him what his thoughts are, ask him what this town specifically is doing. Um, and I don't know if that will even make a difference. And I think that we all have a part to play even if you get it wrong, even if this meeting goes awful. I mean, and I'm nervous, but I also have a privilege. I'm gonna drive to a police station right now. I'm gonna get out of my car. I may even walk into the station. I'm gonna, and I'm not afraid to do that because I've grown up in a world that doesn't, um, where I don't have to be afraid to do that. And that in itself is a privilege. And so we don't, 
necessarily have to feel guilty but we we can use it for good even if you don't know what to do you can read a book you can order this book and you can read it and you can talk to one of your friends and read it together the two books that I try to read at least once a year um, is Woke Church by Dr. Eric Mason and White Fragility by Robin DiAngelo. Um, there's, there's a place to start. If you're looking to educate yourself, that's a great place to start. If you have no one to talk to as you process these books, then you can message me because I am going to be rereading them this summer too. So I thought this was going to be shorter, but I hope it's beneficial. I'm off to my meeting. Um, and I think if anything, listen to people's stories and believe them and share with permission, share those stories because there are experiences that need to be shared. Um, and so I am looking forward to connecting with you all. Um, and you're all together beautiful.